Let's investigate how we find bound states for this uh, rather unnatural looking delta function like potential. Uh, so our goal in trying to find bound states um, is what we're going to be looking for. We're looking for the wave functions that are allowed, the allowed psi sub n and the allowed e sub n energies um, for this potential. In particular, we're looking for the energy eigenstates of the delta function potential. So, okay, uh, we already had some guesses on what this wave function should look like. It should decay as we go out to positive or negative infinity. Um, and so we're just going to label the region on the left region 1 and the region on the right region 2. At the interface between these two, we'll have to worry a little bit about boundary conditions. Uh, we are going to be also assuming that the energy is negative so that we have bound states. Uh, we can look at energy that's positive for scattering states a little bit. So in region 1, the potential is 0. So we have minus h bar squared over 2m psi 1 double prime is equal to e psi 1 for our Schrodinger's equation. Uh, let's just move everything over. So we have psi 1 double prime is 2m minus e h bar squared psi 1. But minus e is a positive number, so everything on the right is positive. So let's write that as k squared times psi 1 where k is minus 2me over h bar squared, square rooted, which is uh, a manifestly real number since energy is negative. Solutions look like a e to the kx plus b e to the minus kx. Uh, but we're in region 1, and so we want to get rid of the minus kx terms because those are going to blow up as we take x go to minus infinity. So we're going to set b equal to 0 in order to have a normalizable solution. So the solution in region 1, psi 1, is a e to the kx. Now let's do the same thing for region 2. Again, in region 2, the potential is 0 there. Uh, and in fact, the Schrodinger's equation looks the same, except now we're going to have psi 2 double prime equal e psi 2. Uh, and so the process is the same. So we'll just jump to that step where it's psi 2 double prime is k squared psi 2. Uh, with the same k. And again, solutions look the same. Let's give different coefficients f e to the kx plus g e to the minus kx. And again, in region 2, we're going to set f equal to 0 uh, because the e to the kx term blows up as x goes to positive infinity. So we want that term to vanish so we have a normalizable solution. So psi double prime of x will be g e to the minus kx in region 2. So we have our wave functions in our two regions, and now we need to match them at the boundary condition. So we need our continuity conditions or our boundary conditions. So let's list our boundary conditions. Uh, so the wave function must be continuous at all places. And so in particular, that says psi 1 at x equal to 0 must be equal to psi 2 at x equal to 0. Or in other words, that a is equal to g. Well, that's easy enough. OK. Uh, what about the derivative of the wave function? So this isn't going to be continuous, because we've got something funky going on at x equal to 0 with the delta function potential. So let's write out Schrodinger's equation here. Uh, so the second derivative minus a delta of x psi of x is equal to e psi of x. Uh, and so what we're going to do to figure out the uh, conditions on the derivative is we're going to integrate both sides over dx from negative epsilon to epsilon around x equal to zero. So going up to our diagram up here, we're choosing from negative epsilon to positive epsilon, and we're going to integrate our Schrodinger's equation in that whole region. Uh, and then we're going to let um, epsilon go to zero at the end of all of this. Okay, so let's just write out each of these terms. That first term is minus h bar squared over 2m, the integral negative epsilon to epsilon, the second derivative integrated over dx. Then we've got a minus a, again, integral negative epsilon to epsilon, delta of x psi of x dx, and that's equal to e minus epsilon to epsilon psi of x dx. Okay, let's look at each of these terms. So this first term, well, that just will give me the derivative of psi evaluated at the boundaries, minus epsilon to epsilon. The second term, I notice I have this delta of x term. 
Uh, and so that will give me a psi of 0 times the integral of the delta function, which is 1. And the term on the right-hand side is a little trickier. Notice this is e times, well, approximately psi at 0 times 2 epsilon, so the height times the width uh, as we take epsilon go to 0. But that goes to 0 as epsilon goes to 0. So the right-hand side should give us 0 in the limit. Okay, so let's just rewrite this uh, so that we write it as the first derivative evaluated between negative epsilon and epsilon is equal to minus 2ma over h bar squared psi evaluated at 0. Okay, so let's write out that term on the left hand side. So that is the derivative of psi evaluated at x equal to plus epsilon minus the derivative of psi evaluated at x equal to minus epsilon. And then that's all equal to yeah, so there is our wave function psi 2 for x equal to epsilon and psi 1 for x equal to minus epsilon. Uh, and then that's all equal to minus 2ma over h bar squared psi at 0. Okay, so now let's use what we know about psi 2. So psi 2 is g e to the minus kx. And psi 1 is a e to the kx. So let's substitute those in to this condition on the derivatives. So we have minus k times g minus k times a, and that's all equal to minus 2ma over h bar squared, and then psi evaluated at 0 is just a. I can get rid of this g and replace it with an a, since I know that g is equal to a. That was one of my other boundary conditions. So this gives me k is equal to ma over h bar squared, but I also know that k is the square root of minus 2me over h bar squared. So I can solve for the allowed energy. It's minus ma squared over 2 h bar squared. So this is my bound state energy for the delta function potential, and notice that there is only one allowed bound state energy. Uh, there's no integer n, so I don't have many different levels. I only have one energy level for the delta function potential. So my wave function then looks like something like a e to the minus kx. k was the ma over h bar squared. Um, and so this is in region 2. And then in region 1, I have a e to the plus ma over h bar squared x, where x is less than 0. Or I could write that combined as a e to the minus ma over h bar squared, absolute value of x. So this is my wave function for my bound state for the delta function potential. Um, of course, you'll need to normalize the coefficient out front to make sure that this is a uh, normalized bound state wave function. So that is the delta function potential.